So you want to get into Airsoft. You've been looking online, watching videos, and have your whole kit picked out. Yet I couldn't help but notice there are still three or four guns in your cart. An Airsoft YouTuber recommended that one. Your friend who's been Airsofting for years recommended this one. But you really, really want that one. Ah, the age-old question. What is the best Airsoft beginner gun? It's a question that I get asked every single day, multiple times. And instead of DMing those people, I just decided to make a video. Although there are some options that are better than others for beginners, like a GNG combat machine, for example, over something like a Sistema PTW, at the end of the day, I just really don't like to tell people what they can and can't get. Nice. And don't get me wrong, I'm all about suggestions. But that's all it should be, it's a suggestion. If you spent any time in Airsoft comment sections or forums, you know that every single gun has issues and everyone loves to talk about them, but not every single gun is perfect. Actually, really, no gun's perfect. A good friend of mine recently bought his first gun and we had had experience with that gun in the past. And thankfully, we were able to test it before we actually bought it um, and it was misfiring like every fifth BB. And that just goes to show you that even though you can have a great gun that a lot of people recommend, there are still some issues that are out of your control. But please, for the love of mid-cap magazines, get something that is easy to upgrade. Because at the end of the day, that's what you're going to be doing. 90% of people out on the field aren't playing with stock guns. Everyone upgrades their guns eventually. Wow, that was good. I used to think that buying a more expensive gun would just make it leagues better, but I've quickly realized that really all you're getting with a more expensive gun is some licensed trademarks, maybe some PTS furniture, and an ambi fire selector. Whoa. At this point in my airsoft journey, really all I'm after is a cost-effective, lightweight, sturdy gun that I can do whatever I want to it. It's my gun, after all. I bought it. So back off. And without a doubt, the High Kappa and the M4 are hands down the most upgradable platforms out there. That's why you see so many of them. They're literally the Honda Civics of the airsoft world. You can throw whatever you want pretty well into them. There's so many parts available. And I get the whole argument for, I just don't want another M4. I get that, but like, look at my M4s. Do those look like every other M4 to you? Not really. You can still make them very unique. However, you gotta be careful because there are still, unfortunately, a few exemptions to these platforms. There are a few brands that make things that aren't exactly upgradable, which I will never understand. For example, the new G&G High Kappa. I'm sure it shoots nice or whatever, but just the fact that I can't go to the store once something breaks and look at the High Kappa shelf and go, all right, I'll take that, that, and that, and know it'll fit, and be able to fix my problem. That is a total deal breaker for me because it uses all proprietary parts. And it's a big reason why I can't recommend this gun to anyone. And that's super unfortunate because I would love to see some competition in the high kappa space. Some more competition at least. Going back to earlier where we talked about making suggestions for people, uh, for some people this can be really, really helpful. But if we're being honest, pretty well all of us got into the sport just so we could live out our Call of Duty fantasies in real life. And in those games, we probably had a favorite gun. Even though as myself, an elite airsoft veteran, I wouldn't touch those guns with a 10-foot pole because I know it doesn't necessarily shoot the best. At the end of the day, as long as it shoots straight, that person is going to get out there and have a blast. And this is because they chose something that they were excited about. And boom, we've got another long-term airsoft player hooked on the sport. Just as an example, mine was the Shorty 12G from Battlefield 4. Once I found out that I could get one of these in real life, I mean, come on, that was game over. And down the road, they'll probably end up selling that gun and buying something better, but at least it got them into the sport. And there will always be really fond memories there. For me, my first AEG was a G36C. It was cheap, wasn't anything fancy, but man, did I love that thing. I was absolutely devastated when it died. We're at a great point in Airsoft. There are great guns at every price range. Don't second guess yourself. 
Just get something that you're happy with. There is always room to upgrade down the road. Enjoy the journey and the constant progression. One of my favorite things in video games is progression. The grind to get better gear and more things. You, that translates to Airsoft. I wouldn't recommend, even if you have a $3,000 budget, to just go buy everything that you've ever dreamed of. Part of the fun of Airsoft is that progression. That's what I personally love. Every couple times you go out, you got something new to try out. It's like you leveled up and you're ready to hit the field. Once you get the best stuff, then what? If you're totally stumped, I highly suggest you rent a gun or borrow a friend. This will give you a good starting point to base things off of and just make sure you enjoy the sport. But at the end of the day, that's just my opinion. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, guys.